A pneumothorax is defined as the presence of air in the pleural cavity. There are two different types of pneumothoraxes, including open, which in the air from the atmosphere enters the pleural cavity due to damage to the outer chest wall, or closed, air from the lung enters the pleural cavity due to damage visceral pleural. Spontaneous pneumothorax is generally a closed pneumothorax. It is the presence of air within the pleural cavity. Air in the normally closed space will disrupt the negative pressure that keeps the lungs from collapsing at the end of exhalation. Thus, the introduction of air into the pleural cavity can quickly lead to lung collapse. This is often the pneumothorax that we see in our ER. Tension pneumothorax is also considered a closed pneumothorax. Those patients receiving especially high levels of PEEP over 15 are at risk for this life-threatening complication. A tension pneumothorax occurs when air rapidly accumulates in the pleural cavity and cannot be evacuated. Pressures build up, which cannot only collapse the lung, but also shift the median sial and severely impede venous return and cardiac output. A tension pneumothorax quickly becomes life-threatening and must be relieved promptly. Signs of a tension pneumothorax include respiratory distress, hypoxia, absent breath sounds on the infected side, a deviated trachea away from the affected side, descended neck veins, shock with hypotension and tachycardia. A tension pneumothorax is potentially fatal condition unless immediately diagnosed and treated. These are often the patients that we use a 14-gauge needle and enter the chest releasing air immediately. Lung trauma can cause rib fractures that can in turn puncture the lung and cause a pneumothorax. Please be on alert for those patients that have been diagnosed with a rib fracture and that come in with shortness of breath. Penetrating trauma such as a gunshot wound or stab wounds can cause an open pneumothorax, commonly called as a sucking chest wound. Open pneumothorax occurs when the outer chest wall is penetrated, either through a gunshot wound, stab wound, or an open thoracotomy. A patient might also receive a chest tube for pleural fusions. Things that cause pleural fusion or accumulation of fluid within the pleural cavity are impacted pyema or an infection, hemothorax, or cryothorax. The chest tube is inserted in the fifth intercostal space. The physician will do a series of techniques to place the chest tube, including anesthetizing the site, placing a two to three centimeter laceration to the area, inserting their hemostats, opening up the tissue and expanding it, inserting their finger, making sure there is no blockages in the way of the chest tube, Inserting the chest tube, making sure that all the fenestrated holes reside within the pleural cavity. The chest tube usually remains in place until the x-ray is shown that all the blood, fluid, or air has drained from the chest and that the lung is fully Let's review the three bottle suction system for the chest tube drainage. This is an old theory, but still applies today with our new system. If the patient was to the right, the fluid would come into that first bottle and all the drainage would sit at the bottom. The air would then escape into the second bottle, going down the tube into the water where there would cause bubbles from the air. The air would then come out of the second tube into the third tube. This third collecting system has a depth of the vacuum pressure where we set it for 20 centimeters of water, creating the suction. The air is then escaped out of there into the vacuum source. This picture demonstrates our current chest tube draining unit. The three chamber system still applies to this unit. The patient's blood or fluid is drained into the first space. The air is then evacuated and went through the water seal chamber of the second space and then into the third chamber with the 20 centimeter of water suction and then out the suction wall attachment. You will also see in the water seal chamber, when the patient has inhalation and exhalation, that the water goes up and down. If this stops, please address your patient and make sure that everything is connected or obtain a chest x-ray. Hello, my name is Rachel Ludy. I am one of the nurse educators here at Mercy Hospital Trauma Center in the Emergency Department. My goal today is go ahead and explain to you what you will need for supplies for the physician placing a chest tube in. Our responsibility as nursing is to make sure that our atrium or water seal device is ready to go once the chest tube is placed, but not only that, helping the physician get the supplies that he or she may need to place the chest tube. For that, in the emergency department, we have 
three um, chest tube trays set up. Um, they look like this, and they say chest tube supply uh, bin. They're located in the trauma cart. There's two of them there, and in room two. So a physician go ahead and, and says we're gonna put a chest tube in for whatever reason, you would just go ahead and grab this bin, and you would also grab um, the water seal chamber device um, that usually sits next to the bin, and then the lot of trochanters that are rubber band together um, that again sits next to the bed. For the physician, you're going to want to get them a bedside table so that they can open their chest tube tray that is considered sterile um, up on that tray. You'll also want to make sure that they're in full PPE. Um, and some cases, when it's emergently, um, that sometimes just needs a mask and gloves or just gloves. So. Um, but once the physician is ready to go, he or she may ask you to go ahead and put some extra 4x4s on. Um, there is a scalpel in the tray, but if they want um, an additional scalpel or a certain specific one, there's some kits or bags located within the bin, um, and that would have that in there. There's extra needles in here. There's extra syringes in here. Um, there's a bag with sutures. Um, there's also... Uh, like I said, a bag with extra syringes if they would need it. The physician also would want you to go ahead and get some tape ready. We use foam foam roll tape um, to to secure the chest tube in place or the chest tube drainage. This is stretchy, so you only need a piece about like that big, and it'll stretch nice nicely. Um, over the chest tube, once it's placed, sew down, ready to go. Um, the physician will either place a four by four or an ABD. So that's also in here. And, and depending on the physician's preference, they even may want a petroleum dressing. And those are also located in the bin. Um, after that's placed, the physician will decide whether which um, device they want to use. So the physician may want to use a trochanter um, or the large bore um, uh, chest tubes. Uh, these are typically used in our trauma patients, anybody with a hemothorax, um, but they're the ones with the metal piece in it. Um, or the physician may want to use a pneumostat, um, and these are typically used with a pigtail device or the pigtail chest tube. Um, they may be used with a smaller um, gauge chest tube, but these devices are typically sent home with patients, or um, they just have like a small pneumo that they they want to fix instead of watching, but these devices are also kept in the chest tube bed. On your side of the end, or as nurses, we need to be looking at getting the actual um, water seal chest drain chambers ready. Um, and so again, that's in the, this big packet. Um, and once you've taken it out of the packet, uh, this is what the device looks like. So you get your, your thing out. Um, it's going to come like this, so you go ahead and turn it so you have a nice um, stand. Uh, and this is going to be attached just like that. So the first thing to do is go ahead and pull this piece up. And this is a measurement of exactly how much water you should put into your uh, water seal. So uh, this right here, where the air comes through and sends it out. Um, so you go ahead and turn this into the off position, pour your fluid in, up nice and full, and then you're going to go ahead and turn this. So we'll demonstrate that right now. This is also used with sterile water, not um, saline. So go ahead and feel that up. So once you've got it nice and full, go ahead and open it. The water will uh, drip down. And that's it for that device. You pull this piece off because this goes to your suction. You can either use this device to fill up your water suction chamber, or right here that we filled to 20, um, 20 centimeters, um, or you can just pour the saline. It's certainly up to you however you want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this up. And again, we only want it to 20, because the more water suction that we have in there, the greater suction that's going to cause to the chest. Once it's right there, go ahead and stop, and then replace your cap. And now you're ready to set it up to suction. So 
Uh, again, this was our first piece that we had. We're gonna take our wall section and we're gonna make sure this is in the off or that there's no section going through and we're gonna connect the two. Um, you want your wall section to be um, completely open or on high. So once it's on high and ready to go, now I can adjust this to a low bubble or low percolation, some people will call it. And so that's what I'm looking for right there. Okay. So you would do that once the, turn it onto section once the physician has hooked it up to the chest tube. But prior to chest tube insertion, you would hold this out, you would take this piece off and hold this because this is considered sterile and you would hand it to the physician and they would go ahead and place it on the um, chest tube. Once on the chest tube, you'll turn on the section, make sure everything's working well, and then they'll go ahead and suture it down and do the dressings. After that, you can go ahead and tape this. Um, you want to make sure that you have a tab, though, that you can kind of pull it apart. But it's basically to prevent these two pieces from falling apart, okay? Um, once that's done, you're ready to go. Make sure that you're um, you're looking at your drainage and you're looking to make sure that you have air bubbles or not in this chamber here. If you did not have air bubbles in this chamber, that means your device is not working and you need to reevaluate everything. For nursing, make sure that in Epic you're documenting your draining in Epic, um, that a chest tube was placed. If two were placed, make sure both were replaced. Sometimes they will put out one on the left and the right side of the chest. If that's the case, just a little um, tidbit, you can also get these with um, Medivac tube connectors, and they're a Y site one. So you can actually use one section per two um, chest tube. So sometimes we go running around and we're looking for that second chest or that wall section or the uh, portable section because we've already used our two wall sections, maybe one for intubation and then one for the chest tube. We can hook this up and then go ahead and use um, one wall section per two chest tubes. So just a little tidbit. That is it when it comes to um, what you'll need for nursing um, and how to help the physician go ahead and insert the chest tube. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.